Central Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. At the beginning of the 16th century, in what we now call Mexico, one of the world's most remarkable civilizations came to flower. The Aztecs were artists, architects, engineers, remarkable administrators, handsome, sensitive, and imaginative. Only one thing marred this great people, their cruel religion which demanded and exacted the most terrifying sacrifices to the gods. Imagine, if you will, a time 400 years ago in the season for pleasing the god Tlaloc, the rain god, who must be kept from pouring down torrents which would destroy the corn crop. We are in the house of Atox. Are you ready, my daughter? Yes, my father. You are not afraid? I am proud to have made myself chosen, but I am afraid. Ah, drink from the vessel. It will give you courage. I shall not shame you. <gasps> it is time. The priest is waiting. Go. Wearing the golden ornaments about her neck, my daughter climbs the 114 steps to the twin temples. The multitude sees the black-clad figure slide from the inky darkness and spread eagle my daughter gently on the sacrificial stone. The high priest raises the obsidian dagger. With one frightful stroke, he drives it into her quivering flesh and reaching drags the heart, still breathing from the cavity. No, no, no. Maria, Maria, daughter, what is it? Oh, oh dream. A terrible dream or a, or a prophecy. Oh, Father, hold me, hold me. I'm so afraid. Our mystery drama, The Altar of Blood, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The sudden death of Professor J. Hollington Wells' wife drove him in despair from the halls of Ivy, where he was a professor of archaeology, back into the field, back to Mexico. What had brought Professor Wells to Mexico City and Lake Texcoco was his wife's ancestry. Although a second-generation American herself, her forebears could be traced back to the Aztecs and their great city of Tenochtitlan. And on the ground of her ancestors, he tried to bury his grief in an intimate and deep study of the Aztecs. A contact that surprisingly led him far afield and his daughter into incredible and terrifying danger. What is it, Maria, dear? Oh, I had this terrible dream. I, I thought I had been held on the sacrificial altar and the high priest had torn out my heart. Oh, it's, it's my fault. I should have never dragged you down. Oh, don't blame yourself. Ah, but I do. Echoes of the past, perhaps. Oh, heaven knows what pervading waves swirl around us from that great civilization which died too soon. Even I, who have no roots in them, couldn't sleep tonight, thinking of all their prowess and their grandeur. Were you dreaming of sacrifices, too? <laughs> Half awake. But yes, hard to understand the contradiction. A people so intellectually awake to life, and yet so tied to fear of the future. Maybe I can understand them a little. Hmm? What do you mean? I don't quite know. I am descended from them. I was thinking of Mother. <laughs> of Carlotta? Why? Why did she have to die so young? What sacrifice would you have made to save her if you could have? Oh, this is, this is night talk, darling. 
No melancholy maunderings by me. <laughs> you, you, you can't change what has happened. We came away to try and write off a personal tragedy. Well, except that you didn't pick the best place to forget. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. Mexico, particularly Tecnoctitlan, was the last place to run to. Where shall we pick up to leave for tomorrow? Madagascar? Carcassonne? Tahiti? New Zealand? Or back to the good old USA? No, I like Mexico. And no wild nightmare is going to change anything. But I would like to get away from the valley for a while. Why not? My notes are all complete. I can write my book anywhere. Besides, I'd like to see the other coast. I've got an idea. What? I've never seen nor traveled the Pacific side. We'll rent a car and drive through Guadalajara to Puerto Vallarta and down to Playa Colorado for a real vacation. Playa Colorado? It's one of those new clubs that provide a total vacation, which are opening up all over the world. Inexpensive, good food, scads of young people for you to meet instead of hanging around with an old fogey like me. That is the way I think of you. Yeah, well, I'll accept the compliment, but then insist the wiser head must prevail. What you need is someone your own age to blow the past right out of your head. And that's just what I'm going to arrange to have happen to you. Now, go back to sleep. And no more dreams. We're really leaving the past behind now. Good night. I love you, Father. I am sleepy. Good night. <laughs> It's a whole new country. Well, Mexico has as many faces as the U.S. Oh, I wouldn't agree to that all the way. But compared to the Yucatan and the valley, oh, this is marvelous. Oh, those craggy mountains to the left, and how wonderful to look out to the sea on the right. It's a little like the uh, Amalfi Drive in Italy. Oh, since I'm driving, I'm glad this road is better. Although I guess by now they've widened that old terror. <laughs> they have. But I remember that first year after high school and before college that you drove Mom and me down the Italian coast. I'd rather forget it. I'm sorry. Oh, not because of your mother. Just how scared I was driving. <laughs> Damn! What is this? Blow out. Oh, thank heaven it was a rear tire. Well, why don't you stop? On this road? I'm trying to find some place I can pull over and be out of traffic. You can't go to the right. It's a hundred... It's a hundred foot drop. Cut over to the left. Into a sheer cliff? Oh, no. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hold your hat. What are you going to do? Uh, there's a little spot over there. I can drive the car off the road. But it'll be rough going for a moment, too. Hope nothing comes around the bend as we cross. Uh, here goes. Uh. Oh, damn. Another tire? Uh, I'm afraid so. Now we're really stuck. Okay, Professor, which way do we start walking? Yeah. <laughs> well, not back anyway. We must be a good 15 to 20 miles outside Puerto Vallarta. And the other way? There's a village, Tomatian. I wonder if we'd find a mechanic there. It's quite a hike. Well, we can't just sit here. It'll be dark in a few hours. We're not exactly in the wilderness, you know. There is a bus route along this road, and we have passed a few other cars. All of them headed the opposite way, and few and far between. Well, at least we can speak the language. Socorro! Hey, senor! Uh, Socorro! Uh, por favor, senor. Uh, nuestro automobile has no trabajo. You're American, sir. Uh, same with the Spanish. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. My, uh... My French is great, my German is passable, and in six months I hope my Spanish will be at least as good. But right now, I'm happy to find it's Americans in trouble. Oh, I didn't mean it the way it sounds. Oh, I know you didn't. Oh, uh, this is my daughter, Maria. My name is Wells. Hallington Wells. He's a hell of a name when you come right down to it. I don't think so. Not if you're the J. Hallington Wells, the archaeologist. That's who he is. Well, then, this is an unexpected honor and pleasure, Miss Wells. Hi, uh, I'm Bill Hallam. Oh, you're interested in archaeology? Yeah, my major in college. 
I'm pleased to meet you. As we are you, for more reasons than one. I'll second that. But uh, we'd better get a move on before some crazy Mexican comes one way or the other or both and finds my Jeep in the way. They drive this road like it was the Indy 500. I'm afraid my car's grounded. Yes, I can see that. Unless you have two spares. But I can give you a lift. Where were you headed? Playa, Colorado. Well, that's just great. It's where I work. Come on, the chariot awaits. I'll help you with your bags, and we can make all of the arrangements to have your car taken care of there. What do you do at the club? I am what they call a G.O. I'll uh, get the big one, Professor. Oh, what's a G.O.? General Organizator. Polite name for beach boy guide companion. And then all of us have our own specialties. Have we got everything? I think so. What's your specialty, Bill? I'm a sailing instructor. Oh, great. I'd love to go for a sail with you. You know something? So would I. <laughs> I don't normally get knocked off my feet by the body beautiful. My parents, background, natural affinity has been more for brains than brawn. But it was obvious Bill had both. And Playa Colorado was just what the doctor might have ordered for Dad and me. Glorious meals, a hacienda, a tight bungalow hanging on the mountainside over the sea. Complete informality. And most of all, a return to the present cutting of a link with the past that had obsessed me all my life. My Aztec heritage and my father's absorption in yesterday rather than today. And the best part of all was my daily sail with Bill. All right. Heaven. Stand by to come about. Oh, do we have to? Oh, on this tack, if we go any further, we're committed to go right out of the bay into the Pacific. Why can't we? Get a bit rough out there. Well, I don't get seasick. Yeah, we're not supposed to. Oh, come on. You know the clubs between turnovers. There are plenty of other boats. And we have the kicker if we get in real trouble. <laughs> I can't think of anyone I'd rather get in trouble with. Well, then hold your course, matey. There's a little cove out there beyond this big island or whatever it is. Can we fetch that cove? If the wind doesn't shift, I'd reckon. And we've plenty of gas to get home if it picks up and we have to sail back in. Then take me there? Lady, I will kid you not. I would take you to the end of the earth if you ask me and care not a whit if I ever return. That's very nice. You're quite a poet, Bill. So is every man in love. Oh, look out for those summer romances. Now, it's a lot deeper than that, Maria. I know. But let's give it a little time to grow up. I have the funniest feeling about that little cove, Bill. Did you like it? Who knocks paradise? I think it's just what Dad's been looking for since Mother died. You know that big mound that juts out from the mountain with a sort of mesa on top? Yeah. It'd be the perfect place for a small house. There's water from the stream above. You, you could cut a driveway down from the main road. There's electricity and, and phone lines there. I wonder who owns the property. I think it's state land. The alcalde in Manzanillo would know. Could you take Dad over there tomorrow to see? It? Sure. But you know, building there wouldn't be all that easy. It's practically jungle, matted with mesquite and cactus and vines. And there's only a thin layer of soil over sheer volcanic rock. I know, Bill, I know, but I don't know how to say it. Something, something calls me there, tells me to go there. Insists that I come back to stay. I've got to go back. No matter what, I have got to take Dad to see it. We did go back, and Dad's reaction was just as strong as mine. It was like coming home. So two days later, we found ourselves discussing the possibility of buying the property with the mayor of Manzanillo. And as I say, senor, it can be bought for a very fair price, I hope. Oh, yes, the price is cheap, but uh, I am aware of your prominence, Dr. Wells, and I'm also well aware that your daughter is of our people historically. I feel it, it would be unfair not to tell you that this, this place has... How do you say? It has a bad name. Why? 
It is a forest, a jungle, no? Uh, from the road, yes. There is much wildlife, more than is usual in this part of Mexico. I don't mean the snakes, the iguana. I mean the jaguar, perhaps the puma even. In this area, there have been many unexplained deaths. You mean man-eating jaguars? Uh, something like that. What do you mean, something like that? If we lived in the valley or the Yucatan, one might worry about ancient ghosts. Ghosts? The men and occasional animals who have been found dead all died the same way. How? The, uh, the senorita will forgive me. I try not to be too, how do you say, graphic. But the chest has been torn apart and the heart removed and taken away. The rest of the body has been untouched. Why would a carnivorous animal who kills to eat select only the heart? Or is this just legend which can be created and believed so easily by peasants who live in constant daily superstition? Or does the alcalde have some ulterior motive to protect this piece of mountain shoreline we do not yet understand? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Whatever the alcalde's doubts may have been about Vista de la Laguna, as the property turned out to be called, Maria and her father brushed them aside. They were impelled, almost driven to buy. The transaction was simple, and within a week, mestizos were hacking and grading a rough road down from the main one. In less than a month, the foundation had been dug, and late one afternoon, Bill had come down to visit them at the temporary trailer in which they were living. Hey, your building crew cuts out pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> one cloud over the sun, even the hint of darkness on the way, and they are over the hill. Vista de Laguna doesn't enjoy much reputation except between Maria and me. You see no signs of jaguar or puma? No. I had the bush beaten pretty thoroughly before we bought, and there was no sign of track of them. How do you suppose the legend built up? No, search me. This isn't land for those creatures anyway. You don't suppose... Suppose what? Well... You know, the business of the heart being torn out. That's so Aztec or Mayan or... No, the Mayans never spread west beyond Oaxaca, as far as we know. And the Aztecs were concentrated in the middle of the country. Although, we know after Cortes and the invasion, they scattered and were driven west. There is some belief that they may have occupied a small strip of the Pacific coast. Well, not here, Daddy. Please, not here. No, unlikely. No. And yet... Hey, look, I didn't want to throw a damper on the evening. I brought a big picnic hamper from Louis Pierre, the chef du village, and some champagne. <laughs> That's nice of him. What's the special occasion? Well... Uh, I meant to speak to you sooner, Daddy, but... Well, the days are so full, and we haven't had much chance to talk about anything except... Well, except all this. Ah, uh, getting the old ball and chain settled. Hmm. So you young folk can be free to enjoy each other and a life together. I love him, Daddy. Well, even the myopic old daughter like me can see that. Oh, what's that? Ooh, sounds like thunder. Oh, no, not yet. Too early. It could ruin the corn crop if the rains come. And we'd have a moat instead of a foundation ditch. Which reminds me. What? I'm going to grab me a shovel. I want to dig at least a couple of shovelfuls of earth out of the foundation I'm building for the rest of my life. Me too. Well, while you ants are busy digging, I'll haul the picnic out of the jeep. <whistles> Sounds like some storm. You could feel the earth tremble. I'll lug the basket under the trailer canopy just in case. Mm, getting dark. I don't like it. Oh, it's just a thunderstorm. It'll blow over. Want a hand down? Oh, I'm not that old. Look out. Yeah. See? Surprise a 20-year-old. Okay, let's dig our marks into posterity. Shovel's ready. Aim. Go. Finish! 
there. I tell you, Senor Alcalde, one moment they were there digging, then a flash of lightning came on thunder, and they just... They just disappeared. Was it still light enough to see? Yes, yes, then. I dropped into the foundation, and I grabbed a shovel, and I tried to dig. And it hit something solid like lava. After I cleared away the loose earth, I could see that it was a great flat stone like... Well, I found an edge, and I tried to pry it. But you couldn't budge it. It must weigh tons. We've got to get a backhoe or a crane up there and try to find them. Hey, we will do what we can. But I am afraid when we find them, it will be like the others. What do you mean? The gossip of the viejos has always been that some of the Aztecs fled through the pass in the mountains from the valley Manzanillo and made a colony. That is why Vista de la Laguna bears la maledicion del diablo. I think the professor and his daughter have been stolen as a sacrifice against the early rain. I hadn't taken more than my shovel full of earth, scraping it off the hard surface below, before I knew what I was uncovering. An Aztec sacrificial stone. And at my next stroke, never mind the elements and the pyrotechnics around us, I must have struck some concealed spot that controlled a balance mechanism. For in a moment, both Maria and myself were flipped by the great stone into a chamber below. No sooner were we deposited there than the five or six ton slab reversed itself on some complex counterweight system and sealed us in this tomb. Are you all right, Maria? Oh, yes, a, a few scrapes and bruises. You? Uh, no, nothing I can't live with if we're going to live. But wait a minute. What is it? My lighter. Where are we? Uh, in a chamber under the sacrificial stone. What sacrificial stone? Hmm. Our lovely mountain eerie looking out over the cove was obviously an Aztec pyramid covered centuries ago by either lava from an erupting volcano or just possibly the encroachment of hundreds of years of jungle growth growing in wind-blown earth. Well, if the stone tipped one way, it can tip the other, can't it? Uh, if we can find out how to do it while there's oxygen or light enough left. Hmm. Look for some counterweight. Maybe we can trace what operates them. Well, maybe Bill can do something from up above. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this light won't last long. Ah, but there's one good sign. What? We're not sealed in. There's air coming from someplace. Wait. Here it is. The staircase. Going down. Where would that take us? Ah, perhaps to the burial vault. Perhaps to ground level. And the way the Aztec priests used to climb unseen to the temple. Yeah, and the air smells fresh enough. Huh? Should we try it? Why not? Huh. Just a... You know, just a curious feeling I have. You're trying to hold something back from me. What is it? Oh, I don't know how to tell you. It's a ridiculous, superstitious feeling. But I have this... inescapable certainty that if we do descend these stairs again and come out into the world again, it won't be the same one we know. You don't have to put it into words. I have the same feeling that it won't be back into the 20th century, but somehow, through some time warp, we'll be thrown back 400 years. Is that it? Yes. To a civilization you've studied most of your life. Isn't that what you want? <laughs> there are two of us, darling. It certainly isn't what you want. No. We stay here and wait and see if Bill can't exhume us. La Grua is... Uh, what, what do you call it? The, the crane is falling off the road. Oh, Lord. The rain has made the edges soft. Now we must send for another one to pull this one back up again. If they're trapped under that stone, they could smother it death. It is unfortunate, Senor Will, but case it will has air for a clear and deuce. Well, God or somebody had better get a move on. Daddy. Yes? It... Is it hard to breathe? Yes. What time is it? I can't see without my glasses. Yeah, 
Can you read my wristwatch? Mm, look, looks like a, a little after half past five. Uh, should be daylight pretty soon. Oh, that means we've been trapped here for over eight hours. Oh, it is hard to breathe. And I'm cold. No, I guess neither of us would dress for an adventure like this. <laughs> Me in shorts and a thin Mexican cotton shirt and you and that Perea you bought at the club. Mm, lovely for Tahitian shores, but not made for catacombs. One way or another, as we're dressed, we could pass for ancient Aztecs or Toltecs or some related tribe. Oh. One way or the other, we... We may be joining my ancestors if we don't get somewhere warmer and with more air. I think you're right, darling. I've, I guess we'll have to try the steps. If we only had some light. Oh, I, I have a match folder in my bra. I left my cigarettes on the bank when I jumped into the fountain ditch. Ah, if there was only something we could just make a torch out of. We don't need one. What? We'll light a match when we need one. But we can feel our way. It isn't that far down. How do you know that? I don't know. I just know. There's the start of it. Keep your hand on my shoulder. I'll lead the way. You sound as if you know it. I feel as though I'm beginning to remember. Remember what? Well, the match went out. Where I came from. What I was meant for. Where I must go. Come, Father. They are waiting. Light a match, Maria. None left. It doesn't matter. I know the way. This is the last step, except one. The step to open the great stone. Watch, Father. again, great princess Itzlakan. I heard you call High Prince Kalkun. I heard my people's cry for help. Lalok, the rain god, hurls down his spears of driving water to destroy the corn, the life of our people. What sacrifice can we offer him to spare us all? Who else but the morning star? Come, Come, make me ready for what must be done. No, Maria. He's no. the old man. No, you Keep must be quiet. Mad. You must be mad or we must be. This is the 20th century. What? 1975. What is this? 1975. The date on your calendar. The Aztec calendar. What day is this? Why, any fool know that. This is the ninth cycle. Seven rabbit, two crocodile. Seven rabbit, nine, nine, fifty-two, nine, oh. Oh, my God. What is it, Father? We've walked down those stairs and out into the past. 400 years ago in 1575. From the moment the great stone ground open and let them out into the light at the base of a great pyramid, they have spoken in Nahuatl, the speech of the Aztec. The professor haltingly, as with a foreign tongue, but Maria fluently and confidently, as though it were her own. Is she the reincarnation of some ancient princess, dead for over 400 years? I'll return shortly with Act Three. The sun was barely over the mountains as they walked away from the base of the great pyramid towering between them and the sea. The professor, looking about it, was transfixed with mingled disbelief and wonder. All around him, scattered in the foothills, surrounding the pyramids on three sides, were the woven thatched huts of a complete Aztec settlement. High above, where he and his daughter had stood last night, planning to build a house where the temples and the sacrificial stone. Maria. Yes, Father, what is it? Can you believe what we're seeing? I believe because I remember and speak in Nahuatl. 
It is not seemly to talk in a foreign language before the high priest. No, oh, the devil with him for the moment. I'm more concerned about you. What's happening to you? Maria, this is a dream. A fantasy. It can't be real. But it is real. Darling, it's impossible. Look, only last night, you and Bill and I were standing on top of this great pyramid here. Only it was buried in the debris of centuries. And we were planning... Bill. I'm sure. Bill, the boy you're in love with. Oh, don't try to kid me that you're not. Bill, I can't quite remember. Look up there. He must be going frantic trying to find a way to get us out of the trap we fell into. I see no one there but the temples and the stone. Do you? Well, no, no not at the moment. What do you and the old one talk of in these strange words, Princess Istakan? It is of no matter, Kalkumur. He speaks our tongue less smoothly. The rain clouds are gathering again. The smoking mirror god frowns on us. And Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent, has deserted us in our need. Last year there was a drought. We lost a third of our people. If the corn is lost this year, we perish. I will go to my place to make ready. Take my father and make him drink of Oxley. So his spirit is prepared for what must be. It shall be as you say, princess. Father, you stay here. There's something I have to do. No, Maria. No, I'm not letting them separate us. Come, old but... man. You will do as you are told. Here you mean nothing. Seize him. No, no. You shall not harm him. He will not be harmed. You have my word. I will see you, my father. Pray for me and the God of the sun to keep the rain from us. No, Maria. No. Don't go. There is nothing you or any man can do. It is written in the stars. Come, drink of Oxley and look for forgetfulness. Okay, back her up slowly. Easy, easy she goes. Lord, I hope that cable holds. Okay, she's starting to come. Watch it! Anyone hurt? No, senor, he's okay. Is this the only crane in the county? Si, senor. Oh, the best we can do is a bulldoze. Okay, we'll rig another cable and try again. At least the rain is stopped. Senor, don't you think by now it's too late? It can't be too late. I must do everything to save Maria, even if it means giving my own life. <laughs> As they dragged me away from my daughter, a sudden lassitude seized me. I felt old and useless and out of my depth. <laughs> it was incredible that facing me, about me, around me, everywhere I turned, was the dream of an archaeologist's life. To see an Aztec village in full operation, in its own time. <laughs> but that's where the madness lay. I'm no believer in time warps, nor fourth and fifth dimensions. Now, I could not accept this moment as the 16th century. But the, but the horrible gnawing fear was that my daughter could. And did. And... And somehow belonged. Calcumal. Yes, old man. How came you here? Were no other Aztec clan has come? After the fall of Montezuma, we were either made slaves or scattered to the wind. Some of us found the pass through the mountains here and found the place by the sea to the west. We found it good. And the white man and Cortez did not know to follow. So we were safe. But the Aztecs were not sea people. No. And here cannot grow our chinampas and our milpas. The cornfields do not produce so well. So we must try to make the best of it. That is why we must make so many sacrifices to the gods. Is that what you expect my daughter to do? It is not what I ask. It is why she is sent. What do you mean? You do not know that many years ago, when first we came here and would have died for food, that she mounted the 114 steps to the temple and by her sacrifice saved the corn and the village. You do not know, you who bring her here again, are you not from the gods, too? In a way. I don't know how to explain it to you, Kalkamal. But we are from... 
nine, nearly ten sheaves ahead in time from a world you will never live to see. Or your children or their children, or their children after them. Ah, you come to destroy us. If you must have a sacrifice, take me. Not my daughter. You are not a royal princess, or from a royal house. I am her father. So you say, of you, I know nothing. Of the princess, I have seen with my own eyes the living pictures, the Toltex traced of her inside the temples. We must put our faith in her. I, I won't let you harm her. What can you do? You are old and weak. See that he is made to drink of Ockley. So he loses himself in dream. Why, damn, we did it! Okay, now, come on. Let's get the crane down to the mesa and get that stone block lifted. Why are you not dressed and ready as I am, princess? I don't know. I... I you are not as you were before. Before? The other time. Ah, no. No, this time I wear one of the dreaded conqueror's helmets. A metal we do not know called iron. It is a symbol of great power. The drums have begun. It is time. No Ka more waiting. Kakamul, listen to me. Do you believe I come from the gods? Yes, princess, but the clouds are gathering about the sun already. Then if you believe I do, will you not listen to me? To hear what? That our gods are false gods. That sacrifice brings nothing in return. This was the message I was sent to bring back to you. I do not accept it. You speak with the forked tongue of the strangers from across the eastern sea. I go now to the temple and the stone. If you do not follow me by yourself, I will first offer up the old one who came with you. No. Then I give you time to make your peace with the gods. By the time the sun is one more hand's breadth over the mountains, if you do not start to mount the steps, the old one will be dead. <laughs> ever tried to wake yourself from a nightmare beyond belief and failed. I can't explain the feeling that I was part of this ancient culture, that something like this had happened before, that perhaps I was facing destiny. But other things had begun to flood back into my consciousness. A modern world, a very sweet guy named Bill that I thought I... And then the only person in my mind's eye was my father already stricken by my mother's early death, being dragged up that inside flight of stairs to the sacrificial stone, his chest bared to the plunge of the obsidian knife, and... No! Listen to me who can hear. All things on earth have their term, and in the most joyous career of their vanity and splendor, their strength fails and they sink into the dust. The things of yesterday are no more today. And the things of yesterday shall cease, perhaps on the morrow. Let us cast aside the horrors of the tomb and reach only for the brilliance of the sun. The shadow's cast of death brings the stars no brilliance. Let us, everyone, seek and make his own future and his own heaven. No one else can make it for you. The rain is on us upon us. Forget the old fool. Seize the princess. Throw her upon the storm. Spread eagle her. Bear her chest. O oh, smoking mirror god, whose breath and heat we quail from in fear. O oh, Tladok, god of the rains, hear us and accept this sacrifice we offer you. As now I raise the knife on high, ready to offer you the gift of the Princess Istakhan's pulsing heart. Offer us thy blessing in the moment before I strike. Ah. 
Daddy, what happened? A bolt of lightning went straight to Calcumel's iron helmet as though he were a lightning rod. Oh, but the explosion. A volcanic eruption. <laughs> Probably what buried this civilization four centuries ago. You mean... You mean we're back in the present? Uh, locked in. Yeah, in our own tomb. Oh, I can't. I can't breathe. Uh, Maria, oxygen almost gone. The stairs, the stairs. But there are no... No stairs. Blocked by the rubble of centuries. <laughs> Even if there were, would you dare go down them again? Oh, Daddy... Daddy, hold me. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Uh, then perhaps we... Perhaps we could offer a prayer. Not to false gods, but to the true one. Almighty God. Almighty Father, I ask this, not for myself who have lived long enough, but uh, only for my daughter. I ask for her the gift of life. Maria! Professor! Are you all right? Oh, yes, Bill, yes! They're all right! They're alive! Gracias a Dios! Oh, Daddy! Oh, Daddy, we're alive! Yes, yes, thanks to... Did you hear what the alcalde said? Thanks to the blessing of God. Did Professor Wells and his daughter walk down those steep stairs into an ancient world to find they were the reincarnation of 400-year-old Aztecs? Or was it all an illusion? A haunting thought to live with. But what is far more important to both of them is just to be alive. I'll be back shortly. Oh, just one further note before I leave you. Excavations now in progress at Vista de la Laguna prove beyond a doubt that there was an Aztec village there some 400 years ago that was buried in tons upon tons of lava and ashes from a volcanic explosion. And in one of the temples, there is a painting of the Princess Itlaca, which bears a remarkable resemblance to Mrs. William Hallam, nay, Maria Wells. It's a tantalizing thought that may be... Well... It's only speculation. We'll have to let it go at that. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Jennifer Harmon, Mason Adams, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I lay awake, tortured by this miserable, painful arthritis. My fingers, my legs. By the light of the full moon that was pouring in through the window... I kept staring at that portrait of you on oh, the wall over Katie, there. Katie, please. Now, don't interrupt please. me. There you were, as you are now, young, strong, handsome. And as I gazed at that painting, a mist, a cloud of some kind, seemed to cover over your beautiful features to color your face completely. As I looked, I realized it had been painted as if a thin cloth had been placed over your sweet face. The kind of cloth is placed over the features of a corpse. Oh, Katie, that's ridiculous. Look at that painting now. Now, you must not laugh at me. As I continued to study the painting, I saw below the edge of the cloth the dark blue marks of fingers on your throat. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.